It's Hard to Believe, the podcast that brings you absolutely true but very hard to believe stories. I'm your host, G Wiz. Now let's get into it. Most people are familiar with the tale of Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman. But did you know that a real Headless Horseman once terrorized the citizens of Arizona for over 10 years during the late 1800s? It's hard to believe, but this story of a demonic rider on a terrifying huge red beast is actually true. The story begins in 1883 in a small adobe house on Eagle Creek in the southeastern corner of the Arizona Territory. At that time, just like you see in the old black and white westerns, there was lots of animosity between the Apaches in that area and the new settlers. Geronimo himself had been leading raids on the encroaching ranches to try to drive the invaders away. Two neighboring ranch families joined forces to better their odds at success. The morning after an Apache raid against their flock, the two neighbors rode off together to assess how many sheep were lost during the attack. They left their wives at home, one of whom was pregnant. Later in the afternoon, the pregnant wife ventured out several yards from her cottage to fetch water from a nearby spring that was surrounded by willows. The other wife suddenly heard the dogs barking and a loud scream that sent her running to the window. As she gazed out in horror, she saw what she described as an enormous red beast being ridden by a devil. She could still hear screams but was so terrified that she barricaded the door and fell to her knees in prayer. The husbands returned that night and found the frightened woman still holed up inside the small adobe home. Hmm, adobe home would be a great name for a virtual assistant. Upon hearing the woman's shocking tale, the two men lit torches and went to search for the missing wife. She was found, trampled to death near the water. Pressed into the mud surrounding her body were hoof prints that were not only twice the size of a normal horse, but they were also cloven, just like a goat, or the devil's. Also, there among the willows were tufts of red hair. The woman's body was taken to Solomonsville, where the coroner at first did not believe the witnesses. However, after completing his autopsy, the inexplicable cloven hoofprint-shaped bruises caused the coroner to finally rule the death, quote, some manner unknown. The story was reported in the local paper at the time, the Mojave County Miner. A few nights later, and just a few miles north of where the woman had been trampled, a group of prospectors were fast asleep after mining for gold on Chase's Creek during the day. Two of the prospectors were sharing a tent, Brokeback Mountain style, when it suddenly came crashing down upon them in their sleep. They awoke to a loud scream and pounding hooves. Then they saw an impossibly large horse run off into the brush. The animal left a large trail that was easy to follow. They gathered the other half dozen miners and proceeded to track the animal all the way to the creek bed. Although they did not spot the beast, they did find giant cloven hoof prints and some long red hairs. The story quickly became the stuff of legend. About a month later, a rancher named Cyrus Hamblin of Salt River, who lives about 80 miles northwest of Eagle Creek, he set out to gather his cattle. He climbed a treeless ridge to get a full view of the area. Cyrus noticed a huge red animal moving through the brush across the ravine below. When the animal emerged into an open area, he could not believe his eyes. He could tell that something resembling a man was riding on the back of the giant red beast, but the man did not appear to be alive. It's hard to believe, but Cyrus said it looked like a skeleton wearing clothes. Back in town, because of his hard-earned reputation, no one doubted Cyrus Hamblin as he relayed what he had witnessed on his ranch. Not only was the beast real, but it also seemed to have a deathly rider. The beast and rider became known as the Red Ghost. The Red Ghost is also what we call the monthly visitor that makes the women in our house a little less fun to live with. Their Red Ghost was spotted again just a few weeks later and about 60 miles west of Hamblin's ranch. Five prospectors managed to get within firing range as the creature, with its ghostly rider, grazed on a mesa. They unloaded a barrage of bullets, but other than being startled, the beast appeared to be unharmed and quickly bolted away. It's hard to believe, 
but this story is about to take a very dark turn. As the creature ran away, something fell from its back. The miners cautiously approached and were horrified at what they found. It was a human skull with some skin and hair attached. The demonic rider had lost his head. The gunshots were thought to have worked. The demonic red beast and its headless skeleton rider were not seen again. Well, not for 10 years at least. In 1893, Mizzou Hastings, a farmer, saw the huge crimson beast outside grazing in his garden. It's hard to believe, but without leaving the house, Mr. Hastings pointed his rifle out the window and killed the creature with a single shot. As he approached the carcass, he could clearly see the red hair and distinct humps of a camel. The skeletal rider was no longer attached, but the scars etched deeply in the animal's skin told the story. Remember I mentioned there was an understandable friction between the settlers and the native people living in the old Wild West? Well, the U.S. Army, in the form of the U.S. Cavalry, was tasked with protecting the settlers and trade routes. In 1855, Congress passed funding for an experiment to try to use camels instead of horses in the deserts of the Southwest. Those troops would become known as the Camel Cavalry. At that time, very few Americans had ever seen a camel. Compared to horses, camels are much larger and far more belligerent. They spit, poop, bite, and lie down wherever they want to, whenever they want to. During rutting season, the males are even known to fight each other to the death. Seeing all of this, one young recruit was simply too terrified to mount such a beast. His commanding officer did not appreciate the insubordination and ordered the soldier's hands to be bound. He was then hoisted into the camel's saddle and tied to the beast until he could get over his fear. It's hard to believe, but this plan backfired immediately. The camel simply ran away with the terrified and helpless young man permanently strapped to its back. Over time, his emaciated body became mummified and slowly the pieces fell off as the red ghost terrorized natives and settlers alike for more than a decade. Oh yeah. In the war with the settlers, the native people lost the land, their freedom, and their way of life. You can find links and more information about this topic and our complete library at our website, hardtobelieve.blog. Thank you for listening. This has been Hard to Believe. I'm your host, G. Wiz, asking you to please like and subscribe for exclusive content.